So I'll go to the verse directly. So first of all, I'm going to read John chapter 4 and verse 24. John chapter 4 and verse 24. John chapter 4 talks about Jesus having an encounter with a Samaritan woman. The John 4.24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. You must worship him in spirit and in truth. <coughs> so worshiping the Almighty God, worshiping the King of Kings, worshiping our Lord is very important. If you don't know how to worship here, how we are going to worship Him in heaven. Remember, in heaven, when you go there, if you go there, in heaven, remember, there is no preaching in heaven. Why is that? Because in heaven, our knowledge would have been perfect. Also remember, there is no prayer either in heaven because mutually we pray for our needs. Our needs would have been fulfilled in heaven. Only one thing you can find in heaven, nothing else, praise <coughs> and worship. Praise and worship. <coughs> Go with me to Roma, uh, sorry, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. <coughs> So for lack of time, I will read, I am reading from Amplified Version, Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, if you have your Bibles, turn to Revelation chapter 4 and look at the word. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes all over, within, underneath their wings. And day and night, they never stop saying, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the ruler of all, who was and who is and who is to come, the unchanging, eternal God. This, this is going on in heaven 24-7 without break. Aliens are worshipping the Almighty God. So as I told you earlier, only one thing we will do in heaven is praise and worship. Praise and worship. So again, you can, uh, I want to take you to another portion. And that's also, uh, you, you can find that in Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, I am reading from verses 9 to 12. After these things I looked, and this is what I saw. A vast multitude, which no one could count, gathered from every nation, and from all the tribes and peoples and languages on the earth, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, Christ dressed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and in a loud voice they cried out, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb, our salvation. The salvation is the Trinity is to give. And God the Trinity, we owe our deliverance. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the 24 elders and the four living creatures. And they fell to their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and majesty and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Every blessing, every wisdom, every thanksgiving and honor and power and might belongs to our Heavenly Father, God the Father. They were worshipping the Lord. Every nation and every nationality were there. Every language group were there. We have to be thankful this is going to happen in heaven. All nations will be there worshipping the Almighty God with the angels. Also the same chapter, Revelation 7, verse 15. For this reason, they are standing before the throne of God, and they serve Him in worship, day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will spread His tabernacle over them, and shelter and protect them with His presence. As they worship, His presence is there to protect them. 
So much so, if you worship God rightly today, it will be a foretaste of heaven on earth. I believe when you worship today, really the presence of God was there. God is in our midst. Also you must remember, the enemy, the evil force, the head of the evil forces, Mr. Satan, he always longs to be worshipped. That is the reason he was cast away from heaven. That's the reason he fought, he fell. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 15. Isaiah chapter 14. Verses 12 to 15. Can one of you read those verses please? How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God, I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the top of the clouds, I will make myself like the most high. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Yeah, because you said in the heart, you are brought down. You are thinking that you will establish your kingdom there. You will put your uh, throne there. So he attempted. He tried to put his throne there, but he was cast out. He was cast out. We know when Jesus was on this earth, he was tempted. The so, uh, word of God says, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. I'm going to read Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, the last temptation out of the three. Again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, splendor, magnificence, and excellence of them. And he told, and he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. That's the only condition he gave. Satan gave. He tried, with, tried it with Jesus, the Lord Jesus. The only thing, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Remember, worship belongs to all the King of Kings, the Lord of God, our Lord and Master. Our Heavenly Father, he, he will not give His glory or worship to anyone else. It belongs to only for Him. I'm going to I'm going to read some verses from Second Thessalonians, chapter two. First, I'm reading verse one. Now, in regard to the coming of our Lord. Jesus Christ, and our gathering together to meet him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, this is Paul writing to church in Thessalonica, and now verses 3 and 4, let no one in any way deceive or entrap you, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. That is a great rebellion and abandonment of the faith by professed Christians. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the antichrist, the one who is destined to be destroyed. Verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself so proudly and so insolently about every so-called God or object of worship, so that he actually enters and takes his seat in the temple of God publicly proclaiming that he himself is God. That will happen before the second coming. Antichrist. He will say he is the God. The satanic influence. So you must also understand. Satan. I will say Mr. Satan. Constantly seek to obstruct true worship. Or constantly he seek to distract people from worship. 
Also, you must remember Satan, Mr. Satan is so cunning that he can make the false appear like true. Usual question after a worship service. Many people ask, how was the worship? How was the worship today? Oh, it's fantastic. It's very good. It's very great. I felt good. In other words, sometimes we think when we come to the worship service, I don't think you will do it. You are good people. You worship the Lord in spirit and truth. But some people, they think when they come to the worship service, what I can get, what I can get, away from the worship, what I can get. But remember, the true worship is asking God, what can I give God? What can I give God? <coughs> Psalms 96, verse 7 to 9. I'm reading from King James Version. Give unto the Lord, O <coughs> ignorance of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the year. It says give, give, give. Worship is giving. Worship is giving. If to explain this further, when you analyze the scripture, the word worship, the first time, even in the, if I'm first going to the Old Testament, in the first time in the Old Testament, the word worship is mentioned in Genesis chapter 22. That is where Abraham took Isaac to sacrifice. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 5 says, Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey. The young man, that is Isaac, and I will go over there and worship God and we will come back to you. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was saying to his servants, Settle down and say here with the donkey. Isaac and myself. Isaac and I will go over there and worship God and we will come back to you. In other words, by worship Abraham meant nothing other than sacrificing his own son. Abraham knew that he was going to sacrifice Isaac there on the mountain. So he was telling his, to his son. I am going there to worship, we are going there to worship the Lord and we will come back. So by worship, Abraham meant sacrificing of his son. When you come to the New Testament, there again, the first time, the word worship is mentioned in Matthew chapter 2 and verse 2. The wise men came to the palace of Herod and they were asking, verse 2, Where is he who, had, who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. We have come to worship him. We know if you uh, go to verse 11 of the same chapter, Matthew 2, 2 and verse 11, and after entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, <coughs> and they fell down and worshipped him. Worshipped then after opening their treasure chest, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. So the wise men from East gave him gifts, giving him big gifts. So worshipping is giving to God. So worship must be God-centered, not man-centered. Only God is worthy to be praised. Only God is worthy to be worshipped. We know King David, he was a worshipper. I'm going to read one verse from 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 4. 2 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 4. David was saying, I call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. 
and I am saved from my enemies. He is worthy to be praised. Revelation 4, 10 and 11, here you can see in heaven the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever and they throw down their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power for you created all things and because of you, you, your will they exist and were created and brought into being. So worship. In heaven also, you can see the 24 years they were worshiping. They were saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God. The same thing we are doing here. When we come, we give to him worship. We say, worthy, you are worthy. Amen. So, many children of God are confused with three words. I would explain that. When we cry out to the Lord, say, Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Or help me, Lord. That is prayer or petition. On the other hand, if you, that is petition or prayer. If you say, Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. That is thanksgiving. That is thanksgiving. But if you say, Praise you, Lord, you are my Savior, that is worship. Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? I'll explain with another thing. Heal me, Lord, that is petition of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for healing me, that is thanksgiving. But if you say, praise you, Lord, my healer, that is worship. Praise you, Lord, my healer, that is worship. So what I'm saying is, thanksgiving is praising God for what he gives or does. Worship is praising God for who he is. Who he is. <coughs> so worship. Not mainly concerned with the blessings, but concentrating on the blesser. Book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Can you read those verses, please? Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Though the fig tree does not bud, there are no grapes on the vines. Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God, Savior. In other words, Abu was saying, if he doesn't have anything, you, one thing you will do. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will shout in exultation in the victorious God of my salvation. Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there is no fruit of the wine, though, he, though the yield of the olive fails, and the fields produce no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there are no cattle in their shores, we don't have anything, that's a say, one word, one word, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. <coughs> Book of Job, chapter 1. You know the story of Job. He lost everything. Even after losing everything, even his ten children were lost. They were killed. After that, what he was saying, Job chapter 1, verses 20 to 22. Then Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head in mourning for the children. And he fell to the ground and worshipped God. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked. Naked I will return there. The Lord gave the and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Through all this, Job did not sin. No, did he blame God. That was worship. Amen. Worship is not telling the Lord, oh, you are 
thank you, praise God, you are the Savior, praise God, you are the healer, when everything is okay. Even in your adverse situation, when you're facing difficult situation, even your health is going down, you will, you must be able to say, praise God, you are my healer. That is what in other words, worship doesn't depend on the circumstances. So we worship not the creature, but the creator. Romans chapter 1 verse 25 says, Because by choice they exchange the truth, the truth of God for a lie, and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever in. So we worship the Almighty God, who is the Creator, who created the heaven and earth, who created everything, who formed us in our mother's soul. He is the Creator. We worship Him. So Romans 1.25, they exchange truth for God. Truth of God for a lie. So here is a little advice I want to tell to the musicians as well as worship leaders. You must be extremely careful and cautious. <laughs> Worship leaders, beware of becoming performers. Musicians, beware of beca becoming entertainers. Don't become an entertainer. Don't become a performer. They come to worship the Almighty God with spirit and God. So attraction should not be towards the singers or musicians. Attraction must be always to the Almighty God. Yeah. <laughs> so the good example, I am going to finish with that, is in Second Chronicles <coughs> chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. Here you can see 120 priests started singing with music, but they were hidden by the glory of the God. The glory of God was seen. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verses 12 to 14. I am ready for African version. And all the Levitical singers, Ashab, Heaven, and Deathpur, with their sons and relatives clothed in fine linen, with cymbals, harps, and whatever, were standing at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests blowing trumpets in unison when the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice praising and thanking the Lord and when they raised their voices accompanied by the trumpets and cymbals and other instruments of music and when they praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not remain standing to minister because of the cloud so the glory and the brilliance of the Lord filled the house of God so 120 uh, uh, priests, they started singing with music, but they were hidden, but the glory of God was seen. So when you worship, you must understand. Worship leaders and you should, you should be hidden, and you must exalt the Almighty God. We will be joyful in His presence. We will be joyful in and, out, in and after worship, because of what of what God has received rather than what we get. Because we are given to Him, we will rejoice. We are coming to worship to give to Him, not to get from Him. But when you give Him the worship, in turn, by His mercy and grace, He always gives to us. But first of all, we must give to Him in worship. Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 7, again from Amplified Version. All these I will I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all the people. So, let us start learning the purest form of worship from nowhere else, from the word of God. Word of God has a lot of problems. So we come to worship the Creator, the Almighty God, the Savior of 
our soul. He is the way, the thing, because of the believers. Amen. We thank the Lord for what He has done. Also, what He does, we thank Him. But we worship. Worship Him. We worship Him for who He is. He is an ever changing God. He is yesterday, today, and forever the same God who is the Creator because of Him. Amen. So, worship Amen. belongs to Him only. Worship belongs to Him only. Amen. So, shall we stand to work? Feet and look to the Lord. As I told you earlier, our prayer, prayer, is not necessary in heaven. So whatever we do here is not necessary in heaven. Only one thing we do here will be continued in heaven in nothing else praise and worship because of that start praising and worshiping in spirit and truth here itself if you're not practicing if you're not doing that here how would be able to worship the king of kings the lord of law the creator in heaven you will not be able to worship worship belongs to you he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of God. He is our Savior. He is our everything. He is our sustainer. Because who He is, we worship Him. Hallelujah. I believe for a few moments, shall we open our mouth and worship Him? Worship Him, Spirit and God. If we are already filled with the Holy Spirit, if you speak in tongues, start speaking in tongues and worship Him because He is worthy. Of all of our, of all of our worship. Don't look to the person if you're left or right. Look to him. He is the creator. He only falls in your mother's soul. He knows what is happening in your lives. He knows what, what the circumstances you're facing. Don't worry about those things. Look to him and few moments. Start worshiping. Start worshiping. Start worshiping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rala bara 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 bara. I want Johnny to lead a uh, worship song, small worship song. We, I believe one of the songs we sang this morning. And also we want to enter into worship for a few moments before we go to the announcement. <laughs>
guess what you 